If you're curious about the whole process of making game ready characters, then no worries. Today, I'll take you through everything you need to know about making beautiful low poly characters inside of Blender. Let's go. Step one is actually planning, coming up with idea and all of that fun stuff for making your character. This is actually kind of a really important part because this will be informing like a lot of the ideas that you choose later. So the first thing I like to do is kind of just come up with that character idea. If I'm really like have no ideas then I kind of just go to like ChatGPT or literally just scroll through like a Pinterest board. Now what you're gonna do is start building a mood board. What a mood board is useful for is basically just gathering a bunch of reference images that kind of encapsulate your idea. There's can be two different types, production and um, inspiration. So production is kind of the, the specific granular things that you want to model. And then the inspiration is kind of the feel of your character, the style of your character and all of that. So you can really encapsulate like what you want your character to look like in the end. Next, I go on to the phase of drawing. Now, I just kind of take this mood board that I've got. So it's basically just a bunch of images that I chucked into a program called PureF, by the way. Download it, really good. And then kind of just start sketching away, trying to come up with a design that I kind of like. Just taking the parts of each different image that I like and stitching them together into my own creative type of character. Once you've done your concept and your references and all of that stuff, then we can actually start modeling, which is quite nice. Base meshes are quite simple. A while ago, I used to just make base meshes with reference images, but I kind of, there's no, there's spent so much time hunting for a good reference image and never actually came out that good. So what I've started using is basically the square and like you take a size of the head and then you kind of like duplicate that down like seven times for the heart of the character. And then you grab like a reference, like mood board of your specific character for like human proportions or just how humans look because your brain will lie to you the whole time. And then start modeling from that. Like it, it takes a while to get used to it and actually be able to make a good character. But once you've done that, then you can push your proportions so much easier and you don't have to rely on like terrible turnaround images that haven't been lined up properly and have bad anatomy and all of that like fun stuff. In this phase, you really want to focus on the topology of your character because if your topology is incorrect, then you're not going to have great bending when you're moving your character later on, which is like quite important because having like these weird deformations, let alone just looking weird, can also lead to like your clothing clipping through your character, which is really annoying to deal with. And you can even import like reference images for specific parts, maybe like a head, because making a low poly head is quite hard. So kind of just like trying to get the exact shape and then you can that also get like the right heart and then that depends on how tall your character is going to be or even like hands because hands are really hard to make just import a reference of hands and then model them or stuff like that then i start making like some basic clothes before i start doing some other stuff and it's very simple all i do is select the base mesh and then just duplicate it and i'm done and then i go the same thing for the hair I basically take part of the head, duplicate it, and I've got like a sculpt. Then I use a solidifier modifier. This is very useful when making hair, clothing, all of the stuff. Use modifiers, they're really useful. And one thing with hair, make it asymmetrical. No one's hair is perfectly symmetrical. I mean, some people might, but just make it asymmetrical. It looks so much nicer. You could just apply your mirror modifier, start using a nice tool, move it around. Just make it like look nice. It's hair, it's never going to be perfect. Again, use reference. It's so much like so useful because you don't know what actually something is supposed to look like. In this character, something that was quite useful was basically with the hair was um, using weight paint groups to change the thickness, which I use from time to time when I'm making hair. So you can kind of have like the scalp be kind of thin and then the like long down the hair have it like thick because it's like flaring out or something. So basically all you do is you make a new weight group or a vertex group and then you can go to weight painting mode and start painting the thickness. Then on the modifier for the solidify modifier, you can choose the vertex group and that'll change how thick. To make this like hair just have a bit more detail and bit, like look a bit nicer, I just made a braid down the side, which is literally just like an edge I duplicated from the hair and then just kind of like add a bunch of edge loops and crisscross it just to add that little bit of detail because like the rest of it's so simple. So just adding that little bit of detail into your character can really make it look nice. So with the clothing, I went back to all those parts that are duplicated and then I started just using the edge side to kind of like move stuff up or just using the knife tool just to kind of start shaping it all and getting to how I actually wanted the clothes to look. Then you can just start scaling edges and stuff to make it like look a bit more baggy because with this pirate character, 
uh, it's not like skin tight, so just start making it look more like actual clothing. When I was modeling the top for this character, I never really decided on a final design for the actual thing, which made my life a lot harder because I had to remodel it like three or four times. So if I had actually done like a proper concept in the beginning, where I'd actually designed and like done some little iterations to actually see what character like I liked the most, it would have been so much easier because you had to model it once instead of model it four times. But yeah, it kind of worked out in there. Yeah, I just started adding in like a bit of colors just to kind of see what like my character is gonna look like in the end. Uh, just to give myself an idea of where I'm going and see if everything's kind of working. I usually like to try to go with some sort of color scheme. Like uh, if you have, even if I have a bunch of browns, like you have like, keep them all like warmer. So they're a bit more reddish and then you can have different shades and then you could have a piece of contrast. Like you can make some blue or even just in this case, I just made like a red piece and it just kind of, is actually kind of stand out and have like that pop of color is something that pop up in a lot of time in like art class and stuff just having that little bright red thing in the middle kind of draws your eye and gives it a bit of like resting point belts are a little bit difficult especially if they cross body like this but it's kind of just ends up being a lot of like you rotate you shift it around use a shrink wrap modifier then you scale it up and then you shrink wrap and then move it around and all of that and then you can see it's like a sheer tool but it ends up like just you move it around and you'll eventually get some sort of belt that actually fits your character uh, and then if you're scaling it up sometimes that can be useful is alt s to like shrink and fatten uh, is sometimes better than scaling it directly and then for the like belt buckles, it's basically just like a square that I took and then you can add some edges, make it gold and you kind of have a belt loop done. Pouches are kind of hard to make on characters, but these ended up working in the end, like especially in low poly, because high poly you can make them and you can have all the different parts, but it kind of just, you can grab a cube and add some edge loop, looks something like a pouch. You'll find that when you're making like props, like you can kind of just break it down to a simple shape. And then if you start building on it, then eventually you'll work up with something that actually looks quite nice. So when you're making something, it may have to try it a couple of times, but in the end, you can get something that actually looks quite nice. And it's also, if you're working in low poly, like it sometimes takes a lot of experimentation to actually get something that looks nice just because of how limited you are with all the polygons. So here's the cloth hanging down just to kind of add that pop of color. Uh, it's just like a little black like, sash thing. I'm not really sure, but yeah, it looked nice. <laughs> if you like the look of this character and you want to follow along like how I actually made it, uh, check the top link in the description. It's like I recorded the entire process. It's like three hours and I put it up there. It has some like tips, has all the buttons I pressed. Uh, but if you want to actually follow along with this entire process, uh, you can go check that out. Uh, link down below. Okay, then we go on to the props of the character. So firstly, I'll try to make a pirate hat, which took a long time to get it right. Like it really long time me messing around, trying to figure out how to get the actual shape to work. If I actually knew what the shape was supposed to kind of look like in 3D space, it might've been a bit better, but it was still difficult for absolutely no reason. So I kind of just took a plane, just kind of shaped it into a triangle and then kind of just extruded it up so far. And yeah, again, a lot of props can just be made with like some simple modeling tools and it's a little far. It ends up being quite nice. Then I also made these like little like choker thing around her neck, which is basically just a duplicated part of the neck, squashed it down as a little far, took parts, extruded it down as a little far, and then made these little circles with again a little far. Uh, and yeah, it shows up a lot in this video. I wanted to make two swords for the character. I just ended up taking a cube and then extruding it out. Just start adding a bunch of edge loops. You can like round out the edge slightly because like the sword will be like flat on the sides, but then the other sides will be rounded a bit. And also curving it because like the some of the blades will be curved, especially with like the parrots and stuff. The handle is basically the same thing. Just took it, duplicated it, extruded it out, uh, and then also made like a little, you know, crossbar with another cube. Just took a plain add dupes and then solidified it out. Then I just took that sword, duplicated it, scaled it down, and whoop de doo, he has two swords now. Okay, cool. So the last couple steps you need to actually make this character game ready is first, number one, you actually have to get game ready materials. And this, if you're doing like no texture paints or anything, can usually be achieved by something called a uh, texture atlasing, which is basically you take a grid of material and then you kind of like all, so like a 10 by 10 or 28 by 28 or 64, something like that. Uh, and then each pixel becomes one color. 
and then you kind of just select different parts of your character that would be a different color and then just like you uv unwrap and then you scale it down into that square uh, and now it has that color and then you have this very low resolution image that takes up very little space uh, and doesn't have to generate like a bunch of extra materials for your game engine and then rigging depending if you're writing for like real or if you're using unity you can usually make some sort of simple rig i have plenty of tutorials on how to rig inside blender uh, i'll also leave those down below basically rigging is just a bunch of bones that you can kind of use to control your character i didn't do it for this one but you can if you want to make your character actually game ready all right if you have enjoyed this video then i have a whole playlist dedicated to making low poly characters it takes you through like a huge like amount of steps there's like videos on a bunch of different topics explaining all of the things that we went right in detail if you want to check out the playlist click on right here cheers